Okay, in this short video we're going to look at how the uh, geology of the UK and its past tectonic processes have influenced the modern landscape. Starting with our example of Bowman's Nose, which is on Dartmoor. This is a granite tor, T-O-R, tor. We can see here that the granite is higher than the surrounding landscape, and we've got these joints here that form the kind of characteristic morphology of a granite tool. This one is called Bowman's Nose. Well, it starts off as one of these things here. These are granite plutons, baffling. This is magma that is rising up through the crust but has then stopped rising. It did not make it to the surface, so it's an intrusive igneous rock. Because it's granite, as we discussed in the last video, granite is very resistant to erosion and weathering, and therefore, while the rock around it gets worn away by uh, freeze-thaw, by rivers, by wind erosion, the granites will tend to stick out and hence form highland areas. And that's why here in Dartmoor, we have uh, granite tours forming highland areas. As this is now exposed with its clitter slope all around these um, smaller lumps of granite, the clitter slope, we get these joints that have formed as this uh, granite was unloaded and so these joints have formed as the weight was removed from the top of the granite and now those joints are areas where erosion can take place so water can go in there, freeze and that will cause frost, frost shattering or freeze thaw weathering. Moving on to the next example that we're interested in, and that was the wheel. Here we've got sedimentary rocks, you can see them here, they're all laid down on top of each other. At one time in the past they will have been flat layers, probably on the bottom of the sea. Now, over time, with lots of uh, powerful tectonic forces, these rocks, or sorry, these sediments were first turned into rocks, and then with pressure coming from here, and from here, that caused it to bend, just like as if you push either side of your textbook, that will cause it to bend. On top here, the chalk is a very hard, resistant, uh, sedimentary rock, whereas some of the rocks underneath are much softer, the wheel, clay, for instance. So, at one point, this chalk will have reached all the way up there. This is an anticline, <coughs> anticline. The fold, the center of the fold being up above the sides of the fold. Once this uh, higher area of chalk, this bit in the middle, was eroded away, it exposed these softer rocks beneath, like the wheeled clay like the green sand. These will then get washed away and that's why we have the wheels which is lower than the downs on either side. So the downs on either side are still capped with chalk and because they're still capped with chalk we get particularly high land there whereas the area in the middle where these softer sediments have been largely eroded away we end up with a lower area. We also get because of the shape of the anticline, we get a shallower slope here and a shallow slope here, whereas inside the wheel, the inner areas of the wheel have a much steeper slope. 